Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Pius X Church for the Eucharistic celebration on the Solemnity of the Nativity of the Lord, Christmas. Join me in praying the stewardship prayer. It is the orange card in the pew. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, my parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It will be friendly if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring other people into its worship and fellowship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and love, and a parish with a noble spirit. If I, who make it what it is, am filled with these same things. Therefore, with your help, O oh God, I shall dedicate myself to growing our faith by being all things that I want my parish to be. A reminder that we have a second collection to support the seminarians and infirm priests. Please be generous. Please turn off all cell phones if you have not already done so and stand and greet your neighbor.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins, and ask God mercy and forgiveness, so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Oh, 
Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we, who have known the mysteries of his light on earth, may also delight in his gladness in heaven who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry while dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulders, dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us up to to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee to the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over the flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you all should be really courageous to come to this Mass, right? It's midnight, for many of you it's already time to sleep. It's cold outside. So thank you for being so courageous. Yeah, wonderful. The Vigil Mass, the Gospel passage was all about 
the genealogy of jesus the 14 14 14 there's 42 generations all the way from abraham so i gave a challenge to the people two options number first option was give the names of all those 42 fathers <laughs> you didn't hear that that's why you don't get it the second option was spell my last name <laughs> that's okay that's my father's name <laughs> yeah you won't get it sorry that's okay no problem it's good christmas just turn around and find your neighbors your family members also your enemies if there are and wish them all a merry christmas now Turn around. Hey. Hope you did not find too many enemies. It's all about peace. That's okay. You don't have to raise your hands for the following questions, okay? How you ever played powerball jackpot lottery i told you don't raise your hands okay <coughs> if you have ever played did you ever win don't say that to me because if i know you are the winner i will come back after you after the match <laughs> so <laughs> so be careful okay <laughs> don't worry maybe you tried How many of you think you are actually a loser in life? Again I told you already don't not raise your hands. This is not a public confession, okay? <laughs> a loser because of various reasons, because of family problems, because of your own difficulties, physical limitations, failures. shortcomings whatever do you think you are a loser now let's change the question how many of you think you are a winner in life not by comparing with others but just realizing i am a winner the truth of the matter is everyone here in this church is a winner the very fact that you are here the very fact that you got the opportunity to be conceived and spend time in your mother's womb and to be born means you are a winner already because it was from some 50 million to 1.2 or 5 billion and finally god decided to create you in his image and likeness so the very fact of being born means you are a winner your life is a gift because you are alive again you are a winner we are created in his image and likeness and god decided and he liked this version of you above all the other options and that's why you are here and your life is a blessing is a gift and therefore you are a winner you may have a lot of limitations shortcomings failures what not amidst all that you are a winner 
Now we leave all of you, all, including me, and we go to Jesus to understand why we are here today, this night. We know that Jesus, we use the word eternally generated from the Father. Eternally generated. Co-eternal. Co-equal. So the word we used in the creed is begotten not made. So God begets God. Human beings beget human beings. From God, therefore, we have Jesus fully God. Of course, his human body is from his mother. Completely. And we are celebrating. And therefore, it's only one son of God from the beginning, eternity, from eternity, and therefore, there is no 50 million to 1.5 billion options. Just one, that's it. No other options. And he decided to be with us. From co-eternal God, decided to be Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. And why? Why did he do that? We said in the beginning, God created everyone, or all of us, in his image and likeness. But because of our Adam and Eve, that image and likeness in us, in you, got tarnished. Distorted a bit. Jesus came into this world to restore the original beauty and original dignity of his father's image and likeness in us. That's number one. We know that Mary and Joseph, they tried their best to go to find room in an inn. Actually, the Greek word for the inn is uh, katalaima. That's not an inn the way we understand. In the uh, northern Africa or the Middle East, what they had was a big compound with some shelters where you can have uh, some th 300, 400 uh, camels could park there. So it's actually the word meaning is caravansary. Caravansary. Yeah, that's the word for that. They tried there. They couldn't find any place there. And finally, they had to go to a stall or a, uh, a barn outside, outside of the town, outside of the city. Above and beyond the margin of the city. And you may wonder why. Well, the answer is simple. They couldn't find any room inside, right? No. They couldn't find a room inside. You're right. But why outside? Because Jesus came into this world to find the lost, the last, the least, the marginalized. And who are the marginalized? Everyone. We said Adam and Eve. From their, the moment of their fall, we are no more living in the city. We are no more living with the Father. We are outside of the paradise. So we are the marginalized. No more in the town. No more in the city. No more inside the inn. We are outside. And because we are outside, our Savior came to be with us. And that's why it is meaningful to say that he couldn't find any room inside with the kings. He had to be had to find a place outside, beyond the line of margin of the city, to be among the last, the least, and the lost. Of course, the shepherds, they are the people, the poor people, they receive the good news first. And they, we know where they live. Not inside the city, they're outside. He decided to be among the marginalized, every one of us, so that he can feel, experience our life and lift us up, take us back 
to the palace, to the paradise of his father. The song of the angels, glory to God in the highest, peace to people with whom the favor of God rest. Does that mean some people are excluded? Peace to the people with whom the favor of the Lord rests. So there are people who are excluded. Excluded people, avoided. Hey, these people. The gift of the grace is given to everybody equally, no difference. But it's up to every individual to receive it. Enjoy the favor of God. Enjoy the grace of God is up to you, up to us. I can say no to his grace. I can say I don't want to be with you. It's my decision. Jesus cannot force me to be with him. He invites me. He offers this to me. But I can say no to him. So he decided to be where I am. To tell me about his father. The love of his father. The mercy of his father. Share that with me so that I can be with him. Again, it's my decision. We all see, we all say that the people were waiting for a savior. In their understanding, the savior is a king. A king who brings peace and prosperity. Of course, we know Jesus didn't bring the peace the way we understand now. Or the prosperity the way we understand. Prosperity for him was the abundance of grace. Grace above grace. The prosperity of grace given freely to us. So why do we celebrate again his birthday today? What is the importance of that for us? We all know that the, the, the most important gift of Christmas is Jesus Christ, right? Yes. What does he bring to us? We said in the beginning, the creation, we are his images and likeness. In him, through him, that image and likeness is restored. That's it. That's it. Just a restoration of the image and likeness. What's next? Well, we have to focus on the altar now to see what that. Jesus came into this world through his life, through his death, through his resurrection, through the Holy Eucharist. We enter into his life fully. The Holy Eucharist, every Sunday we request people, the Catholic Church ask everyone to come to church every Sunday at least, right? Why? Because the word of God is from the Bible, the body of God is from the altar. We take the body of Christ and we become the body of Christ. The body of Christ is eternal. Those who take the body of Christ, those who are made sons and daughters of God the Father in Jesus Christ, those who become brothers and sisters of Jesus in baptism, they are eternal. Because we are eternal and physical, we need the eternal food. The body and blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why the church asks us to go to church every Sunday. So how many of you believe that you are actually eternal? You have eternal life. It's a question, you can raise your hand. Thank you. Yes. And that's what we are actually celebrating today. In him, through him, we are made eternal. 
Our life is eternal. So first we won the, uh, the lottery. We are winners because of our life. The very fact we are living means we are winners. Now we are double winners. Not just life, but eternal life. Living today. Living forever. And that's why his birth is important. That's why we celebrate his birth. Expecting his second coming. That's his resurrection is the guarantee of our resurrection. His eternal life is the guarantee of our eternal life. Christmas means we are eternal. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit in the garden of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We thank Almighty God for our life and blessings, and we ask Him to give us the grace so that we may continue to see Jesus in others. For the church, may God preserve us from evil and draw us ever closer to His Son, the Incarnate Word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For world leaders, all authority. May God turn their hands from violence and set their hearts toward bringing peace to earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all expected parents, may God bring safe delivery to their children. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in our faith community, especially the people of this parish, May the newborn king lead us in love, restoring relationships that are broken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who have died in the light of faith, especially Dr. J.B. Vatican, may God grant them abundant joy as they see him face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the soul of George Vitt, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection. O Holy Mother of God, do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin.
Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him, God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down a spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciple saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, shown our bishop and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face how may you on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah.
Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with Him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Well, the Christmas ornaments are available for parishioners. You see two baskets in front of the manger. Please uh, come and pick them up as you. Our Catholic tradition is to go to the manger at the end of the Mass and uh, either bow or kneel down uh, as our reverence to the baby Jesus. So all are welcome to do that at the end of the Mass. Well, I could just sit here and uh, enjoy your wonderful music for a long time, but uh, I had to conclude the Mass. So, <laughs> so thank you very much for singing. <clears throat> the 
the church decoration also looks really wonderful a lot of people worked hard to make it all happen so we thank them all for their hard work again thank you for coming to this mass and all those sons and daughters who are with their parents and back to their home parish for this christmas thank you for doing that because people like me we never get to go home for any of these celebrations yeah i'm not i'm not kidding you know so when you can do it because that's a wonderful gift for your parents to be with them and again to be back in your home parish right that's a wonderful thing as one big family we gather here in this house of god one family st pius and parish as one big family we come here we gather together we celebrate mass not only on christmas as <laughs> a difference every sunday we gather here okay keep that in mind every sunday we say christmas you know what that is christ mass okay so every mass is christ mass the lord be with you may almighty god bless you all the father son and the holy spirit amen go in peace glorify the lord by your life thanks be to god send by to the archangel defend us in battle be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil may god rebuke him we humbly pray and do thou prince of the heavenly host by the power of god cast into hell satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls amen